George here. In the last video, we made our procedural 3D checkerboard texture. However, the standard shader inside of Unity is unable to work with it. In this video, we're going to create our own shader to handle both the 3D texture we generated as well as the 3D UVs. So I've already opened up my project. Make sure you open yours up from the previous video as well. Go ahead and open up your previous shader from the last video or create a new one if you haven't already. So the first thing we're going to need to do is modify our properties. Now this is going to be a very basic shader. We're actually not going to need any of the metallic glossiness or color modifiers here. So we're going to go ahead and remove those from our property section. We're only going to leave a section for the main text and that's going to be the texture we pass in. The only thing we need to change is the 2D into 3D. So let's do that, 3D. Next up is our sub shader. And then we have our tags and our LOD. Now right above the CG part of this, we actually need to tell the system that we're going to do a render pass. And we're gonna do that by typing in pass with a curly brace. And then we're gonna come down all the way to the end right after NCG and put in another brace. There we go. Now let's do a little bit of cleanup. We had gotten rid of those properties. Therefore, those variables are no longer needed. And those are right here, the half glossiness, half metallic and fixed for color. Just go ahead, select them and delete them on out. And there are some other things that we don't necessarily need. Um, for instance, the instancing for the buffer, we can get rid of all of this as well, just to clean things up. It's not important to our shader at this time. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So next up, we need to declare our vertex and fragment shader. So right here, uh, where our pragma surface surf standard full forward shadows, which is telling us that we have our surf function here, that we're using standard lighting, we're using shadows, we're going to get rid of all of that. And instead it's going to say vertex for our vertex program, vert. And then we're also going to do pound pragma. And we're going to do fragment frag. Okay, so we're gonna have a function called vert and a function called frag, and those are gonna be responsible for the vertex and fragment parts. Now we need to define our inputs, basically. Uh, to do that, we're gonna have two of them. We need a vertex shader input and a vertex shader output. The vertex shader input is what we have coming into our vertex shader, and that's gonna end up being our position and our texture coordinates. And our output from there is also gonna be our position, although now it's been transformed by the uh, matrix, the MVP matrix, model view projection matrix. And then uh, we're also gonna to need to output our texture cords as well. So down here, we have this struct input. Let's just go ahead and change that from struct input to verd input. And instead of a float two for our main texture, we're actually gonna want that instead to be a float three. And then of course we have UV before that in order to de define the UVs for it. The convention is it's whatever the name is with UV in front of it or UV two if we're using the second channel or three or four or whatever UV channel you happen to be working with. Right now we're only working with that one, so that's it. So now that we have our vertex input, let's get rid of the stuff inside of it and let's declare two things that we are necessary. The first is a float four position and we're going to bind that to position and then we're also going to do float three text chord and this is going to be text chord zero by the way if you need to look this stuff up in the unity documentation it tells you all the different things you can bind to you just have to find them there the most important thing here is this line right here where we've said that the text chords are of type float three as opposed to float two which is what you would normally get if you're using the standard shader inside of unity now we need to create our second struct so let's do struct vert output and inside of here we're also going to have a float four position, except that this is going to be SV underscore position. So this is our transform position. And then we're going to have another float three. And this is going to be our text chord, which once again is text chord zero. Okay, and with that, we have set everything up for us to begin working with the vertex and fragment shaders themselves. So why don't we go ahead here and delete this surface function. We don't need that anymore. And now we're going to declare our vertex function. So the imp the output of the vertex is of course vert output, which is what we created, that struct. And then we're gonna do vert. And then our input is our vert input that we had already just created. All right, so this is very easy. Vert output. O for output, and then we'll do O dot position is going to be equal to, now this is a special function, unity object to clip position. This is recommended by unity to use instead of uh, just matrix multiplication. 
and we're going to pass in our input dot position. So that's this value right here. Now, in order to use this, we actually need to add one thing in that I forgot, and that is right over here underneath the pound pragmas, we also need and include. So we're going to do pound include, and I'm going to include the following file, unity cg dot cg inc. And if you want to, you can go look up this file. It's actually uh, loaded in your, I believe it's the data file and then um, where all the shaders are actually stored. If you take a look at it, it's got a whole bunch of interesting functionality that Unity has created for you automatically. We're gonna be working with some of that functionality, which is the Unity object to clip function right here. So of course we need to include that in without having to define it ourselves. So next up, now that we've done our position, we need to do our text chord. So output dot text chord is going to be equal to our input dot text chord. Couldn't be easier than that. Finally, we're going to return our output. All right, next up is our fragment shader. Uh, for a fragment shader, we're going to output a half four. That's going to be a, a color, basically, uh, RGBA. It's our fragment shader, which we called frag, and then vert output O is our input coming in. I know that sounds weird, but it's the output of the vertex shader coming into the fragment shader. And finally, we wanna make sure that we bind this to SV underscore target, which is our output for this, which is gonna be the color that we run into. You could also type in color if you wanted to here, but I'm gonna use SV target because that seems to be what Unity wants to use in their documentation. So we're gonna do a half four, main color is going to be equal to text 3D. That's important here. Remember, we're sampling a 3D texture here. We want to use our main texture, which is a 3D texture, and we're going to use our three-dimensional texture coordinates, which are passed in right there. So now we've grabbed that uh, color, we've sampled it, and uh, all we need to do after that is return it. So let's just do a return main color. And with that, we've defined our own shader. That should work just perfectly. So let's go over to Unity and see what er errors we have. And it looks like we do have one. So shader error, custom 3D shader, unrecognized identifier vert output. So I probably wrote something incorrectly. So vert output is how it should be. And then text 3D, no matching to parameter intrinsic function, possible functions, and most likely I have something set up improperly. So this says it's taking a sampler 3D and it should also be taking float 3Ds. So let's take a look over here. We have text 3D underscore main text. Here's main text up here. Here's the issue right here. See how it says sampler 2D? This should have been a sampler 3D. Come back on over here, and there we go. All the errors from our shader disappear, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. Why don't we come over here to our material, go ahead up to, well, actually, we need a nice name for this, don't we? So let's go back over here, and instead of custom, put in your last name or something, that's easy, so I'm gonna just put in Lee Cakes, Texture 3D. Coming back over here now, go to Standard, and I'll go to my name, Texture 3D, and now it's working with that shader. And then of course we only have one field and that is our texture 3D field. This is what's going to get populated at runtime for us to work with. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and hit run and see what happens. All right, looks like we got an error. Uh, error assigning 3D texture to 2D texture property, main text dimensions must match. So let's figure out where that is. Let's see if the materials are correct. So if we select our objects, what do we actually have? We have, ah, here's the issue, uh, checkerboard is of type, let's see, this one, they're both of type standard, so I have to change that actually. So let's come over here, Lee Cakes, and of course I messed that up, so there we go. And we need to also change this one around as well. Because they're running an editor, they have their own instances, so things are getting kind of screwy. Uh, one thing that I did fail to do is that I have this set to white. We're gonna just get rid of that and keep it blank. Oh, and it looks like we did something incredibly stupid last time. I'll check, take a look at this. We never actually assigned our value here to uh, whatever we get. So we actually need to do colors and current index is equal to temp. All right, great. So now we shouldn't have a blank texture. So coming on back here, let's go ahead and hit run. All right, and there we go. Now we have our checkerboard pattern. So as you can see, as I move that through space, we get to sample it. Uh, we actually see it moving across the entire object, or the object is actually moving through the texture space, which gives us a pretty unique effect. So you can kind of imagine objects moving throughout an area that you define a procedural texture in and getting some pretty interesting stuff happening. So let's actually see, there we go, it's too high. So there's the actual space it should be in. And really it should be at 0 0.5 if we wanted to make this perfect, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then you get the full effect right there. Or if you wanted to, you can bring it down 
over here, and then in here, and then further down, and then now it's just white. Now it's all black, and of course, uh, horizontal stripes, and uh, vertical stripes up there. So anyway, that is how you create your own shader to make this whole thing work. In the uh, follow-up video, we're probably going to take a little bit of a break and look at some other interesting uh, procedural 3D textures that you can generate yourself. But then we're going to start to look at a different problem, and that is, what if I wanted to introduce transparency to this? That is, I wanted to start seeing through this. Right now, we have an object that's just composed of planes, but I want to see inside of it. I want to maybe get rid of the, um, the black lines or the white lines and just have the remainder of there. How would I go about doing that? We're going to look at a couple different strategies out there. Uh, one of them is by creating planes and having them sample the texture. And uh, for way further down the road in videos, we'll maybe look at um, actually doing ray tracing, uh, manual ray tracing, and, and actually uh, figuring out through a shader what color should be on the screen at each particular place. But anyway, I hope you learned something new, and I will see you next time. So long and good night.